Hey, what's up, everybody? Glenn Snyder here, Ministry of Defense LLC, Dr. Corbett Average. And we're back again, again today with a little bit of a, another, I don't really call it a review as much as it's just uh, show and tell. Um, we've made it clear, podcast after podcast after podcast over time, is that we are huge proponents of edge weapons. We like knives. We like blades. Um, he really likes them. And... You know, again, with that takes you know, your, your understanding of the blade you're using, understanding how to deploy it, how to function with it, uh, things to see when other people are handling blades, things to look for. Um, but he brought a new little toy in here with us today. This is his every. This is his EDC. <laughs> it's not your a- average everyday EDC, but it is. And uh, how about e- EOD every other day? Uh, every other day. Okay, uh, it just depends on what pants you're wearing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, anyway, without without me doing any more damage to what he's going to say, <laughs> let me uh, turn it over to him. I'll start off. I've I have been hesitant for a long time about discussing some of this because we, you know, don't want to be a, accused of being promoting violence. This is for your benefit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a lot of what I want to talk about today is instructional. It's, it's what's been handed down for me. You know, little background, my instructor came from England. He was taught by a Japanese man uh, who was quite elderly then. So uh, a lot of his background came with, with swords and a lot of uh, Japanese cutlery. I'll leave it that way. Mm-hmm. And also where he grew up, you learn to fight. Right, you know, in in that part of the world, it wasn't like you know we could go. You could go down to the store and buy a Smith and Wesson or a Glock. You either carried a knife or you learned to fight or both. Yeah. So a lot of the majority of what I learned about knives and knife violence, I learned from him because he had encountered it. This is one I carry every day. It's a, it's a very, by knife standards, it's very crude. Uh, I actually got this one. Uh, it was it was uh, custom made. It is kind of a knockoff. Uh, it is not a true tanto because if you can see, uh, if you can look at the way the blade is made, it's kind of flat on one side. If you can see that, the way the blade mm-hmm. is tapered. Knives are kind of like guns with for people that are in that community because you will get. A hundred different people, you get a hundred different opinions on what the best knife is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, for years we heard about karambit, karambit. Well, yeah. Well, why? We, and then when they're doing test cuts. Um, you, we learned a lot of things that they don't do real good to the material. Right. You know, I mean, <laughs> so, and, and I'm not. I like karambits. Yeah. But you know, when you're going through a, a suit jacket. Yeah. Uh, that changes things. Um. I'm a big fan of Ed's manifesto. Ed Calderon's work. You know, he's they, he started in with a lot of those the, those blades. I, they don't fit me. The thing I like about tantos is the way a, a true Japanese tanto is the way the blade is made. You know, in a stabbing motion or depending on which way you go mm-hmm. in, it is extremely difficult to stop the bleeding mm-hmm. just by the wound pattern. And when I got this one, it is a I don't think this could probably even be considered a true tanto, but it is extraordinarily sharp. Yeah. Just the way it was made, and when when I got it from from my buddy, it was it was just I'm like, well, I'll, I'll just do it and see what it does to a piece of paper. And I've actually shaved with this. It's that sharp. Um, but what we wanted to cover today, as far as something that, that you know, just for for all of you, is I want you to look at what's going on in the world. Mm-hmm. And just a couple things that you may want to be aware of, situational awareness. Here we go, right? Mm -hmm. That's your favorite word. Mm -hmm. But I'm reading more and more reports about a lot of these places like Portland and where a lot of this stuff is going on. You're starting to hear a little bit more about people getting stabbed. Mm -hmm. What's the advantage of carrying a knife versus a gun? It's quiet. It's quiet. You know, nobody, you know, (laughs) usually if anybody that's skilled with a knife, they're not going to show it to you. Right. By the time you know it's there, it's hanging out of you, or probably you've done got you got sewing machined a few times. Yeah. You know, if you've worked in a prison, if you or if you've ever been in prison, uh, it's not like you know they walk up to you and you start doing like this. It, no, it's yeah, like the movies. Yeah. You know, you've you're already starting to expel body fluids by the time you know it's there. Right. 
But one thing that I learned from my instructor that he picked up in a in a rather large European city that he passed on to us is is if you do happen to see the knife prior to it being or attempted to be stuck inside of you, is pay attention to the way the person is holding it. And it's going to tell them tell you a lot about their level of training and their intent. The one thing I'll leave today is like if you if you look and you're able to see if the person is holding it with the sharp edge up. Mm. If you see that, you're in very serious trouble and you're, you're against someone that knows what they're doing and you either need to leave or shoot them. Hmm. Why is that such a big deal is because you have to look at, the, at, the, at what can happen here. With the sharp edge up, if you penetrate the skin and you stab, you're able to pull the wrist back and pull your elbow back towards you. Now, what do you have there? Mm. you've got a wound pattern as long as the blade and a half moon arc coming back out of the body. So now you've got a, a wound pattern instead of the width of the blade. It's now about that long and it's taking out everything on its way out with the sharp edge down. You can't do that. Your shoulder gets in the way. Mm. Multiple other ways that can be done with, with the sharp edge up, but that's one thing that he really stressed with us is once you go in, you can always pull out like that and you've got an enormous wound cavity. Yeah. Again, if it's somebody who knows what they're doing with a knife, you're probably not going to know it until it's too late. Right. If it's if you do happen to, to catch it, you know, just out of your, you know, something hits the light, whatever, and you see that and you can make discern, you know, in, the, in those couple of seconds, mm -hmm. if you see the sharp edge up, you've got some instantaneous decisions you got to make absolutely and i don't recommend taking somebody on like that because if they if if they do know something about what they're doing and they're holding that knife in that manner they know what they're doing yeah. and you're getting ready to get seriously injured or killed right uh the thing i like about this one also is it's unassuming you know i have had a few people comment on it in public the way i usually carry it is you know it's got a you no know, it's it's a brown sheath so it's not tactical mm. and dang that, man i'm disappointed now no that's you don't have I, black black paracord on there that's either, why i so. did that because it you know it you know <laughs> what's hunting knife whatever yeah, the case may be yeah. but the way i carry it, so i actually put that inside my pocket with that on the outside mm. you know and then you're going to get those that say well are you carrying a concealed weapon i've spoke to countless police officers and stores and the handles hanging out and They've seen it, have never said a word to me. Right. You know, so, uh, but I chose Brown specifically for that reason. Mm. You know, it's just. It's not menacing. It's not menacing. You're yeah. not, you know, it, it, you know, what's, you know, you know, it looks like a pair of dress shoes, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so, um, but it is a very crude knife as far as it's just its construction. You know, it just, if you just look at the way it's made. Uh, I'm not so sure he probably didn't make it out of a, I know, just an old piece of railroad iron. That's what you're looking at, that railroad spike. Yeah, it's... That's what reminds uh, me of somebody's hammered out of an old spike. You know, my thing on knives, this is my opinion alone, if you spend four or $500 dollars on a knife, you know, you need to be in a straight jacket. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, don't because, do that. You know, my opinion on a knife is you need to spend as much as you're not willing to lose right. if you have to use it. Yeah. Uh. If you and and opinions vary, but I think probably if you have to use a knife in self defense, you're going to wind up in far more trouble than you do with a gun anyway. Right. Because this is seen as a as a thug weapon, as a as a as a criminal's weapon. Right. Um. You know, there's been evidence of people getting stabbed in the aorta and living for twenty to thirty minutes without treatment. Right. Um. Uh, you know, people being stabbed multiple times before they even realize they're cut. Yeah, and we do we do blade training. You know, one thing we 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 basically put to to bed really quick mm -hmm. with our students is we show them what a real knife attack feels like. Right. You know, we, we got trainer dummy trainer knives, but we show the violent, just erratic, crazy. Mm -hmm. This is how it's going to be. And then when they they step back and they've got red whelps all over them, uh, they they realize real quick there's not a whole lot they could have done. 
right. <laughs> so know, a, a violent knife attack is just that it's violent but you know you look at it also is is you know if you do have to go to court with this and you stab somebody 10 or 12 times yeah good luck with that argument on self-defense even even though it, you know in, in my opinion it may be legit yeah you may be completely justified in what you've done. But that number, it but, works but that you. number that that these people that do not have the level of training you may have, or understand what you went through when you were standing in that corner with three guys around you, mm -hmm. uh, they're just not going to understand it. You shoot somebody once with a with a forty five, the average person gets that. Yeah. Uh, and this this bull crap about you know I'd rather be tried by twelve and carried by six. Yeah. That's for another discussion, but you have no idea what you're talking about. Right. But coming back full circle, though, if you got to use it, be willing to lose it. And I'll yeah. I'll let you read between the lines on that. Uh, not legal advice. No, not legal advice. <laughs> Just him talking. I'll, re I'll reiterate it again. If you're taking legal advice from me. You deserve that you, pretty soon. Yeah, you, you deserve the Irish Spring and, you know, in the Sunrise area. I'll just leave it at that. You know, y'all do what you want to do. Oh, my God. So, oh, again, what we wanted to do was just bring in, like, him kind of you know, show and tell on on something personal that, you know, we'll try to bring in things that, that we carry, that we that we you know, use as, as personal protection or just use yeah. it, you know, Things that we want to have on our person, uh, for whatever reason, because um, this one's on me every day. Even if, you know, there's there's times that where I work, I can't carry a gun. Yeah, but this one's on me all the time. Yeah, and so and that's what we want to show. We want to kind of share, you know, what we use, why we use it, how we use it, <laughs> and uh, just kind of bring some of the stuff to the surface. So you guys can learn from it. Maybe maybe you know, you you got something you can pick up from what what he was talking about. Hopefully you can. Uh, if you guys have something to add to the conversation, we'd love to hear it. So anyway, that's uh, that's uh, Corbett's number one EDC right there, or yeah. EOC. EDC, EDOC, <laughs> MOUSC, whatever. You know. Oh, God. Anyway, that's it. Uh, it's it for today. Until next time, you guys be safe. Take care.